Do you or someone you know want to learn electronics and how to solder? These Geek Club kits will teach you these skills and leave you with a very nice model. Personally, I'm all about expanding my skill set so I can design and make as many things as possible. For me, soldering is an integral part of my available tools. If you've been looking for a fun way to learn about electronics and how to solder, or perhaps that description better fits someone that you're about to buy a gift for, watch on as we evaluate these cyberpunk themed kits from Geek Club. Geek Club is a seller on Amazon that makes educational electronics kits, such as the cyberpunk themed models that we're exploring today. What's interesting to me here is that all of the components are made out of PCB. In the Cyberpunk range there are 5 models, and the one I've built is the Ant 001 Hexapod tank. We're also testing out the Geek Toolkit box, which is intended as a first set of tools for electronics and soldering. The toolkit by itself is US $59. The cheapest model you can build is the Cybercopter at US $49, and the most expensive, the MXC 2 Leg Sniper, which is $99. The hexapod tank and the toolkit shown in this video were provided free of charge for me to evaluate in accordance with my review policy. In case you're wondering exactly how these kits work, here's an explanation. All of the pieces of the kit are made from PCB. That stands for printed circuit board and is the basis of most consumer electronics. It has layers of conductive copper on fiberglass sheet. When constructing these kits, not only do we need to solder right electronics components like on a regular PCB, but we also solder these individual pieces together to make sub-assemblies, and then these sub-assemblies are soldered together to form the overall structure. There's no glue or traditional fasteners like nuts and bolts required, and it means by the time the kit is complete, the person making it will have had a lot of practice of soldering in different styles. When making this video, my aim was to assess these products from a variety of perspectives. Firstly, as a way of learning about electronics and how to solder for a child or an adult. Secondly, to judge the quality of the toolkit as an introduction to electronics work. And thirdly, the kit itself as a fun project for a tinkerer. I'll address these criteria at the end. For now, let's get into the unboxing and then the assembly. In my opinion, the graphic design throughout both of these products is really nice and it looks like something you'd find on the shelf of a department store. The back of the hexapod tank informs us that it's towards the master end of the difficulty scale and gives us an overview of the build. The toolkit box has similar attractive packaging with an itemized diagram of what's contained inside. And we're going to open this one first. Inside we have some safety and operational instructions for the soldering iron and underneath that are all the actual components. We can see our soldering iron is cordless, or should I say portable, because it doesn't need to be plugged into the wall. We have this overshaped pen size solder wire dispenser. We've got some rubber grip coated needle nose pliers, a credit card sized magnifying glass. This is handy for inspecting your solder joints up close. We've got a soldering iron tip cleaner, and I'm a big fan of these. A small flat file, again with a rubber coated handle. A set of precision tweezers with a little safety cap. A stand for the soldering iron to rest on when you're not handling it. The power cable and cap for the soldering iron. As you can see, the soldering iron is 5 volts, and this means you can power it from a power bank, a phone charger, or any other USB supply that can handle a current draw of 1.5 amps. And the last thing in the toolkit is a set of safety glasses. Inside the box for the actual tank kit, we have several PCB sheets each of which contain many components. We also have a sticker sheet with various designs in case you want to customize the finished model. We have a bag full of electronics components such as LEDs, resistors, and the coin cell battery holder. And finally, we have two instruction manuals. One of them will be specific to whichever kit you're building. In this case, the instruction manual for the tank. The manual contains many reference images, a list of components, and as you might expect, the step-by-step -step instructions for constructing the kit. The second booklet is the educational manual, and I believe this would come in every kit and is the same for each. This booklet is more about electronics in general and goes through the theory with some analogies to try and explain the concepts. It's also where you'll find specific instructions on how to do the various types of soldering, 
and it has a breakdown of why components are named as they are and how to tell the difference between the positive and negative ends of each component. If you want to browse through these yourself, I've linked the instruction page in the description. You can come down to Cyberpunk Models, find the PDF instructions for each kit, the educational manual, and a link through to their YouTube channel, where they also have video logs of the entire builds. Time to begin assembly, and I started with two very eager helpers. The recommended age is 14+, plus, so I figured an 8 and a 10 year old would be up to the task. It was immediately clear, however, that perhaps they were a little bit young, because they were daunted by removing all of the pieces. They were particularly worried about locating the correct pieces and removing them from the sheet without any damage, but they needn't have worried, because anywhere where the parts connect, we have this section we call the zebra stripe, which is perforated to ensure the part snaps there. What was annoying was keeping track of what part was what. We constantly had to backtrack to find out where that part was located in the sheet, and I can't help but feel the process would be much easier if all of the part numbers were labelled on the outer PCB sheet. Particularly when for every component, you can build it with two different colour configurations and each of those has their own part numbers assigned. Eventually, with some help, we did manage to locate all of the parts required and slot the leg pieces together, ready for some soldering. In this state, the legs do like to fall apart as many things are just resting in place. So to have any chance of soldering the parts together accurately, we're going to need an extra tool, either in the form of a soldering helping hand as pictured here, which was quite effective in holding the pieces in place, or a 3D printed solution in the form of this nano vise. The size and weight of this proved ideal and I used it to solder most of the tricky bits. I then set up some of the legs for my kids to have their first ever attempt at soldering. Each of them were nervous about burning themselves or somehow ruining the model, but with encouragement, they were both able to get the job done to a good standard. I then took over construction as it was time to solder on some surface mount components. We emptied the components from the bag, consulted the instructions and located them one at a time. Using the supplied tweezers and a whole lot of patience, I located, placed and soldered the resistors and colored LEDs to complete the six legs. Or so I thought. I noticed the upcoming instructions required more components than I had remaining, so I reviewed the instructions more closely and found some inconsistencies. Okay, so let me explain. One of the nice things about this kit is it has built-in scaling of difficulty, so we can use easier through-hole LEDs, SMD LEDs, or if we want more of a challenge, RGB LEDs. But beyond this page, I really didn't find enough instruction on how the procedure changed depending on this choice. For instance, what shipped with my kit was a set of 1 kilo ohm resistors labelled 102, yet when we start to build the legs, all of the labelled resistors are 301 or 300 ohms. And that matches what's shown earlier for the RGB LEDs. In the educational manual, it tells me to expect 91, 300 and 1K resistors, yet this kit only comes with the 1K. Confused, I headed to the instructional video to see what they did there, and they were using the 1K resistors which came in my kit, but of course that doesn't match the instructions. What was even more frustrating is they were telling me to cut a trace on the PCB before soldering, but as you can see there is zero mention of this anywhere on these instructions. To remedy this problem, I had to desolder all of the surface mount resistors, cut the traces as per the video, and then solder them back into place, after which I chose to verify them with a the multimeter. When it comes to placing these components, there's also four variations on what parts you can use, some of them being recommended and others only being optional. There's a lot of concepts here, which is great from an educational point of view, but they need to be followed through. This combined with the mistakes and discrepancies in the instructions, added a layer of unnecessary frustration for me. With that mishap rectified, I was able to push on with assembly. I'll be quick in presenting the rest of the build because it's very similar in structure to what you've seen already. In essence, we extract components, position them as per the diagrams and then solder them into place. Running through the PCB parts are the positive and negative circuits needed to turn on the lights. And these are coloured pink and green, so when you're soldering them together, you can ensure you don't miss any. As for future resistors, even though the written instructions said nothing about it, I decided to cut the traces before soldering them into place. Even though I was matching what was soldered on in the video, they magically had many more spare resistors compared to me. So the only way I could keep up with the required amount from the written instructions 
was to supplement from a cheap sample book of surface mount resistors that I had sitting on the shelf for several years now. Some of the required soldering is easily accessible and therefore quite simple. Other parts are a lot smaller and more difficult because they're fiddly, although they were still possible for my daughter, who was keen enough to come back for another turn. And other junctions were obscured and therefore very difficult to see and solder. Eventually though, I was able to add the final piece to complete the construction of the tank. Here it is with everything together, and as you can see, it's got a lot of detail. There's lights, guns, sensors and arms located all around the model. And when we insert a coin cell battery and turn off the lights, this thing really comes to life. Some of the LEDs are static, whereas others flash on and off. And the combination of this, combined with the detail in the model, gives an aesthetic that's very visually pleasing. Everything was together, so what did I think of this in terms of our earlier criteria? Our first criteria is whether this kit is suitable as a way to learn about electronics and specifically how to learn how to solder. For this I'd say it's definitely a yes. The educational manual has a lot of great content and it uses a water analogy very well to illustrate how electricity works and how it interacts with the various components included in the kit. In terms of learning how to solder, if practice makes perfect then this is a very good kit because there's a lot of soldering that needs to be done and the majority of it is quite accessible, as proven by both of my kids being able to achieve success. In the case of my 10 year old daughter, she exclaimed that soldering was very satisfying and came back for more, which was nice to see. If you've got younger kids, this might be a nice joint activity, and if your kids are in their teens, they'll probably be able to do it independently, assuming they're patient, as the surface mount components are very small and fiddly and need the correct polarity if they're to function properly. Probably the main barrier to a beginner would be the discrepancies in some of the instructions, with the process differing between the video and written documentation. Hopefully the PDF version of the instructions online receive an update, and I'd recommend watching the build video just in case. So how about the toolkit? Well I'm pleased to say that everything here worked as it intended, and the only thing that gave me some frustration is the soldering iron. It's got a built-in sleep mode that turns off the power after 25 seconds. I'd often find when doing multiple solder joints, I would start really well, but then the soldering iron would suddenly lose heat and I had to shake it or press the button to get it to turn back on and wait for it to heat up again. I did do some experimentation after finishing the build and if you jiggle it or press the button constantly, it will switch off but then switch back on immediately. I also tested the output temperature with a thermocouple and if you're willing to keep it alive like this, it will maintain somewhere around 300 degrees constantly. This definitely isn't a workhorse, but it is handy to have a portable soldering iron that you can take to a car or 3D printer. It's also worth mentioning that there's plenty of solder left over for future projects. Finally, how about the actual kit as a project to complete and as a finished product? Personally, I was very pleased with the outcome and I really like the design and attention to detail on this model. It's surprisingly hefty and solid once it's all constructed and it looks incredible when it's all lit up. However, if you want to build it, as you see it here with all of the optional LEDs in place, if you mix and match the LEDs, you will have enough. I still had plenty left over, but you will be limited by the amount of surface mount resistors. So you're either going to have to leave out some LEDs or supply some additional resistors of your own. My only other suggestion is that the battery is quite awkward to get to and I needed to use a long hex key to remove it and turn the model off. Having an on off switch would be a very welcome bonus here. I was frustrated at times, but overall, I still think this is good. And the changes needed to make it great, I think are quite minimal. So hopefully Geek Club are listening to my feedback. Let me know what you think, whether it interests you, or maybe it would be a suitable gift for someone you love. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy learning new skills. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.